Hello everyone, Mike Hoffman here with another video exclusive for Tip Squirrel at www.tipsquirrel.com. For all kinds of Photoshop and Lightroom goodness, follow at Tip Squirrel on Twitter or Facebook.com slash Tip Squirrel. Within Photoshop, there are any number of ways to add a color cast to your images. You can add a simple layer filled with color using transparency and blend modes or you can add a photo filter layer, or even a hue saturation adjustment layer. All of these allow you to add a more or less uniform color to your entire image to provide a mood or to change the temperature or setting. But today we're going to look at something a little different, the selective color adjustment layer. Selective color will give you the ability not only to add a color cast to your image, but it will let you control the color changes depending upon the underlying colors within the image. This gives you a very powerful, multi-purpose and flexible tool all in one adjustment layer. Let's take a look. We'll start with this image of some medieval looking knights galloping along on horseback. The costumes and the props are all quite well done and very colorful in fact. But in my opinion, this image doesn't really have a compelling story. No real drama. So let's add some. We'll start with the selective color adjustment layer, which you can add from the menu by choosing layer, then new adjustment layer, and selective color right here at the bottom. Or if you have the adjustments panel open, you can choose the second icon on the bottom row here for selective color, or for that matter, you can click this icon at the bottom of the layers panel and you can choose selective color right from here. Once the adjustment layer is created with its mask, you should see the properties window appear within the settings for the adjustment layer. I'm using Photoshop CS6, but in older versions of Photoshop, these adjustments would be over in the adjustments panel. We'll start with the colors here set to the neutrals. And this will allow us to shift colors based upon the tones within our image that are closest to a neutral or mid-tone gray. This is usually a good place to start. For this image, we're going to try to move towards a golden hue that will lend some mood as well as some sense of age to this photo. Now notice the sliders here for cyan, magenta, yellow and black. As we look down the sliders here, we also want to keep in mind the RGB color space for red, green, and blue, which happens to line up as the exact opposite of the CMYK space listed here on the sliders. For example, the opposite of cyan is red. The opposite of magenta is green. The opposite of yellow is blue. We'll start with the cyan slider at the top. And since we're going for the gold color here in this image, notice that if we move it to the right, it starts going towards cyan. We pull it the other way, and it tends a little bit towards the red, which we'll need to blend in with a yellow to make our orange gold color. So we'll dial this in to about minus 66%. Next, we'll move to the magenta slider. And with a little experimentation, we can see that moving it to the right makes it way too purple. If we move it to the left, we're starting to get more of a yellow tone and we're moving it towards the green color. We'll set this one to about 45% or so. Next, we'll move to the yellow slider. And here again, we want to move this one away from the blue and towards the yellow. So in this case, we'll drag to the right and we'll bump this one up maybe about 20% or so. Finally, we can look at the blacks. Adjusting this slider allows us to add density to the blacks or to open up the shadows. If we move it this way, we open up the shadows. If we move it to the right, we get more density and more punch in the blacks. So I'm going to set this one to around 15% or so. Now we're starting to get that golden hue but because some of the clothing in this image is so saturated with other colors, and we can see that again if we hide this adjustment layer momentarily, the rich blues 
and the rich greens. The gold isn't really unifying the image as much as we'd like to have it. So here's where the real power of selective color comes in. Now up to now, remember that we've been operating on the neutral colors within the image. The greens and the blues here, the highly saturated colors are far from neutral. And we can operate on them individually. Let's start with the greens, which will have the greatest effect on the night on the right hand side. So we'll click here and choose greens. Now with the green color selected, and I'll pull this out here so we can see what we're doing. We can again take out a lot of the cyan and we can move this towards red, which helps to contribute to the golden orange color. We'll set it to about minus 65 or so, minus 66. For the magenta slider, again we'll experiment and once again I think it looks better as we move it to the left. We'll set this one to about minus 43. For the yellow slider, as we adjust it back and forth, there isn't much of an impact, but the shift towards more yellow does seem to give the type of look that we're looking for. So we'll leave this set to about 70%. And finally, again, with the black, we can add a little more density to the areas within that green color, maybe just about 10% or so. Now we'll tackle the blues, which are in the Knight's clothing on this side. So we'll click here and go to the blues and we'll take away some of the cyan again in favor of the red and this again is going to be important as we drive towards a more orange gold color. So about minus 55 or so. Again we'll subtract some of the magenta out of there in favor of the green take this one down to about 55 percent as well and we'll add some more yellow in there and as we add the yellow you can again see what was formerly blue starting to come more in tune with the rest of the image and have that yellowish gold color so we'll bump this up a little bit higher maybe to about 45 percent or so and we'll skip the blacks on this one. Now we can take a look at the cyans as well. You can make some changes here and this is often where you'll have the most impact on the skies. Here there isn't too much in the cyan tones within this image so even if we crank the cyans over we're not going to get much impact here. Now we've provided a uniform color cast to the entire image, adjusting some colors more than others. This is highly dependent on your own vision, so feel free to experiment here. Now that we have this rich golden color, it's time to add the finishing touches to this image. We'll start by choosing the Move tool and dragging this grungy texture right over the top of our image. I hold the Shift key to center it and we'll set the blend mode of this grunge layer to overlay, to blend it in with our image. It's a bit strong, so we can take the transparency down by adjusting the opacity, and we'll run it down to about 70% or so. Now, if our knights are riding into a dusty battle, it's appropriate to add some smoke to this image, or maybe some fog. To do that, we'll just add a new layer and make sure that our colors are set to the default of black and white by pressing the D key and then we'll use filter render clouds. We'll set the clouds layer blend mode to screen which will show only the white areas and in fact we can press command F several times to vary the effects of the clouds by running the filter over and over again. Once we have it the way we want it, we'll add a layer mask to the clouds layer and we'll choose a large soft round brush and we'll make sure the color is set to black and we can brush away some of the smoke to reveal the center of our image. And that looks pretty good. In fact, we can reduce the opacity of the brush. I'm going to 
press the number 2 key, which sets the opacity to 20%, and continue brushing away some of this smoke just to vary it and blend it in a little bit with the image. And if it's still a little strong, we can even run the opacity down just a little bit, maybe down to about 80% or so. And there you have it, a real gritty, intense image that looks a lot better than where we started with what was a simple photograph. So we've taken the snapshot and we've created quite a dramatic scene from it using the selective color adjustment layer and some finishing touches. My name is Mike Hoffman. My website is hoffmanartdesign.com. You'll find a variety of photography and tutorials and related information there. Or you can follow me at mhoffman2001 on Twitter. And you can find me on Google Plus by simply going to gplusmikehoffman.com. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.